Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Lightroom 5 Beta was released this week, and uh, there's already been a bunch of videos put out there on the web, especially this one from Richard, I forget the guy's last name, sorry. Richard something, I think he's with Adobe or associated with Adobe. Anyway, he has a little walkthrough and goes over some of the changes and enhancements in this beta version. Now, I'm sure that this won't be the end of the line as far as new features because they always add a few features for us to test out and kind of play with and tease us with a little bit. And then they finally bring out the new version. So my guess right now is it'll be sometime over the summer that the new one's coming out or maybe in the fall. Um, I'm going to say probably the fall as a guess. Um, I doubt that they're going to release a new piece of software during the summer because their sales probably won't be that hot. So they'll probably wait until September if it is going to be released this year for that new version. But in the meantime, you're allowed to use this one for a while, which is nice. And so uh, if you haven't tried out Lightroom 5, I highly suggest that you do it. Uh, or even 4, if you haven't tried out Lightroom, period, you should, you should definitely do it. Now, this video is all about what I want to see in Lightroom 5. I have a lot of a list of things here that I have been thinking about for a long time. Some of them all the way back to Lightroom version 1 and back to the original uh, beta that came out, you know, pre-version 1. As, lo as long as far back as I've been using it, I've wanted a lot of these features. And if you have any questions or any features that you want to see, please comment below with those things. And maybe they're already in there. You don't know where they are, and I'll help you with that. If not, let's put them down there. Let's get a good list. Share this video a lot. Maybe we can get it to go viral and maybe we can get people out there and thinking about it and maybe we can get some of these features into Lightroom 5 before it goes out to the public. So, number one thing that bothers the heck out of me on the PC. I use it on the Mac and on the PC. My Mac is my uh, laptop and then the PC is my desktop. Here is the PC version, and here's the problem. When I double click, oh, let me rephrase that. I can't double click on any of the catalogs when I try to open a catalog. This drives me up the wall that I have to select it and then go down here and hit open. Why? Makes no sense. You can do it with a double tap on the, um, Double click on the Mac, why can't you do it on the PC? This has driven me nuts since version one. There's no reason for it. Just fix it, please, Adobe, fix this. Next thing that I wanted to talk about is the book module. It's okay, it's not great. The layouts are very simple, and there's a number, I will admit, there's a lot of different layouts that you can do and play with, and some ideas that are in here, but they're not custom. And from what I can tell and what I've played with in version 4 and version 5 now, you can't really customize it. You can't make it exactly how you want it. And that is a real, that really just plain sucks in my mind. Um, what this should be, what this should allow, this application, it should keep me through the entire process. If I'm shooting a wedding or an event or something like that, I should be able to do absolutely everything in this application. And it's very, very close, but it's not quite there. Uh, number one, calling my images, ranking them, showing them to the client as another one, editing them, which is good. You know, develop module is awesome. I do a lot of my developing inside of Adobe Lightroom. And there's actually one feature that's really nice that's gotten actually better, and two features actually that have gotten better that I'm very happy with inside of this. But the book is just not there. Number one, limited, limited to only blurb. That sucks. It limits my options, and I don't want to go with a blurred book. I want something nicer, higher end, and that's just the way it is. So, it, you know, that sucks. It does give me the JPEG exporting option, but the problem there is, is that with other software that I use, when I order my images from Miller's, I, can, I send them individual images, and those individual images can be color corrected before they're put onto the page. And so Miller's can adjust one photo just a hair to make it match the rest of them and look better as long as I have that option turned on. And why not do that? Why not take advantage of that? Because they know what their colors are and they're going to make it look really good. And, uh, you know, I trust them. I've worked with them for a long time. I've really had no, no issues at all as far as color. But um, 
you know, open it up to new labs that's got new new companies. Um, be able to completely draw in your own placement, your own image sizes, your own everything for each individual image. Uh, you know, add borders. You know, this is these are things that are are in a ton of other pe uh, pieces of software for building albums. Why isn't it in here? This is Adobe. This is the you know one of the biggest software manufacturers, software companies in the world. Why isn't this option built in here? So um, it definitely keeps me from using this book module. Um, the JPEG option is nice, but it flattens the image, which is no different than if I would just take it into Photoshop. So I want to be able to do the entire process for inside of here from importing, sorting, developing, um, you know, and then printing them, pushing them up to the web, printing my photos if I choose to print them here in-house. It'd be great to be able to send them directly to my lab. You know what I mean? Have a, a way to a module or something that would automatically import or a plugin that would automatically allow me to order my prints right in this program. Make this the de facto program that will keep everybody uh, behind, you know, make everybody like, wow, I have to have the software. It makes it so much easier. And, uh, you know, if you make some kind of a plugin system that allows ordering right for prints right from here, that means aperture, that means people were skipped from iPhoto, means you're only going to sell more copies and you're going to make more interest because the labs will be interested in it and the labs won't have to make their own software anymore. They'll be able to concentrate on what they're doing well, which is printing photos rather than spending a ton of money on software and building their own software systems. So that this, in my mind, is the better way to go and um, the book module can, leaves a lot to be desired in my mind and I am hoping that they're going to improve on it. Uh, next thing, tethered capture. I totally don't understand why we have to, when we do tethered capture, uh, I don't know if this is gonna work because I don't have a camera connected, why we have to have a separate um why we have to have this floating box here i never know where to put it where, where am i going to put this thing if i'm trying to look at photos i don't know to put it on the bottom or the left or the right because typically when i'm working oops typically when i'm working and i'm shooting okay i'm like this and i'm looking at the photo in full screen you know or i'm trying to show it in full screen i i, I just don't know where to put it and it's it seems to always be in a way why isn't there just you know a way to make it float or something and not maybe not float like this but you know dock it here dock it there it just doesn't make sense so uh, i think there's got to be a better solution for this you know maybe you can dock it in one of the side panels that when you come over here you can click it um you know or maybe put it up here at the top something just the floating thing just doesn't work for me i don't like it um oh, my next pet peeve which uh, once again i hope that they fix this is the automatic backups okay the backup system is terrible in lightroom i mean it works but the options that are in there are are uh, just terrible so here's the thing we come in here and this is my lightroom drive okay here's all my catalogs now i have a ton of catalogs as you see here one for each year except for 03 to 05 and then I come back here to 11, and I look at my backups. Oops, I already deleted those. Come back to 12. In 2012, look at all these backups that I have in here. Okay, these take up a lot of space. So here are all my backups. And as you see, they go all the way back to September, which is probably the last time that I deleted them. So number one, why doesn't it limit the number of copies that are kept? So QuickBooks can do this. Why can't Lightroom do this? Okay, I can tell QuickBooks that I want to keep my last five copies of my backups. And it'll delete the old ones. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. Instead, I have to sit here and look at all of these copies. And we're talking about 10 gigabytes of backups. That is a huge amount of space that's being taken up. And that just stinks that I have to, to go back and delete these manually. Remember to do it. Oh man, I'm running out of hard drive space. Why is it? A lot of people aren't even going to know that this is the case. Either give me an option to limit the amount of space that it's using up for the backups, or give me an option to limit the number of copies of my backups that you're actually storing. One or the other that needs to happen. Um, the other thing in the backups that once again drives me up the wall 
and I, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it here, but when I exit, you have a prompt that says, do you want to back up or do you want to skip? Don't prompt me. Don't give me another button. Don't give me another chance to skip it and get more pissed off that I have to click another button. Okay? Just make the backup and exit gracefully and be done. Have an option to just do it and not prompt me and just, you know, just, just get it done. Just, just don't make my life more difficult. Just let me file and exit. And if it starts, maybe just, you know, if I want to hit a cancel button, have it as a cancel. Otherwise, let it process right away so that it exits and there's no issues and it just does it. Don't make me click another button before the application closes. It's just poor design and poor UI in my mind. And I, the backups, I think, can be a lot better. Uh, next thing in the developer, I'm sorry, in, over here in the keywording, this is just a simple thing, but give me a preset of a predefined keyword list. Give me a good basic list of, you know, 20,000 keywords, something like that, already built in so that I can get the ball rolling and really work right away with keywords and then start adding my own. It should be a simple thing, even if it's an additional thing that we need to go and download that's already provided. I mean, there are a ton of other lists out there that you can purchase, but include it in the application, make our lives so much easier. I think people would actually use it and do it if they already had keywords in here. And um, just please, just put keywords in here so that it's already done. Um, next thing, custom keyboard shortcuts. I have not found a way to do any kind of a custom keyboard shortcut. If there is one and I'm wrong, please let me know. But uh, I don't. I haven't found a way to do it. Great example. D is for develop, and then G is for the grid mode. Those are the two that I use all the time. Okay, but I don't use flags, and I don't. You know, I don't use a P. The P key makes more sense to me to be able to put as a uh, print module because I do have been doing some printing here on my own on my Epson. And so that makes a lot more sense to me to use the P key for print rather than a P for flag. And so please let me do my own custom keyboard shortcuts to make my life easier. Um, network catalogs. This one has been driving me crazy since version one of Adobe Lightroom. Before I used Lightroom to really catalog, I was working in a studio and we had about 400,000 images, something like that, which is where I'm at right now, probably about four, 450. Well, no, I guess I'm not that high. But anyway, uh, we had about 400,000 images in, the, in our catalogs and uh, photos and we were using a program called Extensus, Cat, Extensus something, Extensus Portfolio. That's what it was, to catalog all of our images. And great application and it worked and it worked pretty well. It would crash a little bit, but it worked on the Mac and on the PC. It worked from one catalog and it would store the file on the server. So if I wanted to catalog the images from, from my workstation, it would work fine. Or if I wanted to catalog them from another workstation or from a server, it would work fine too. But I don't understand why what it, Adobe's limitation is and why they insist on not keeping the catalog file on a network drive and why we have to jump through all these hoops and all these kind of back ways, and there, I mean, there are some ways if you search around the internet to get around this, and I'm hoping to actually try one of those out for my own pretty soon. But again, just makes no sense to not have a network catalog so that I can open the same catalog on another computer without having to export, without having to do all this stuff and jump through all these hoops in order to get it to work. So please give us some kind of a server, some kind of a network catalog, some kind of something um, you know, there's millions of database applications that run off of a server. There's no reason why this database application, which is Adobe Lightroom, can't do it too. Uh, next one, better master and slave catalog management. Um, from what I can tell uh, from the... Go back and show my photos. I don't know where they went. Oh, there we go. Um, the catalog management, basically these photos right here were exported out of my master catalog, which is on my workstation, and I brought them up here on my laptop to record this uh, this video. But there's no way from, the, the only way for me to get that data back in is either A, take the XMP files and to copy them back over and then read them, or B, uh, export this catalog or reopen this catalog on the PC. That's not ideal. I think there's better ways to do it um, and just say, hey, this is a, you know, this is a slave catalog and you want, you know, when you get home to the, get home and you can just have a button that say, 
that says push any changes to your master catalog and you just say yes. And that is a much better way rather than having to import an individual catalog and then you have multiple catalogs. You don't know if you ever imported that data. You don't know what's in sync and what's not in sync. And, um, you know, just to be able to say, okay, connect this one to the master one. And then, okay, I need this set of photos, drag them over with the new Lightroom 5 Smart Previews. And then I don't need to use the, don't need to have the full files, which is great. That's an awesome option. But let's take it one step farther. Let's, you know, make a really good master and slave catalog so that I can work more effectively and more easily on the road rather than just this little smart preview thing, which I think is just a patch and it's just a, um, I mean, it's a step in the right direction, but I think we the, they can do a lot better. Um, what else? Um, last one I wanted to add, same with the master slave idea, is an iPad app. Why doesn't Adobe have a, an official Lightroom iPad app so that I can take my photos with the smart previews, push them over into the iPad app, show them on a bigger screen, show them to a client, do something with them, show them as a portfolio, and um, then any changes I can then easily sync back to the original uh, computer. There is an application out there which I have not tried for the iPad. I'm, I'm uh, really hoping to try it one of these days, but I just haven't had time to do it and to put it together. So um, one of, maybe one of these days I'll get to it and make it happen. So Greg Cazillo, cazillo.com. Thanks guys, keep shooting. Put your questions down here, what do you wanna see at the bottom of the video. See you.